In this video, we'll be creating our compute cluster to power our data processing and run our workloads. To create a cluster, head over to the compute page. So here you can see your all-purpose compute clusters. To create a compute, you simply click on Create Compute here. You can give your cluster a name. I will just keep it as the default. And then you specify a Databricks runtime version. So this Databricks runtime version specifies the Spark version, pre-installed libraries, and optimizations available on the Databricks cluster. So different versions support different features. This ML means that these clusters are optimized for machine learning, hence the ML suffix. LTS means long-term support. So selecting the right runtime ensures compatibility with your workloads. So I'll select standard. I'll select the highest version with long-term support, which is 15.4. So that runs Scala version 2.12 and Spark version 3.5.0. This compute cluster in the Databricks Community Edition is a free resource. It's provided for learning and experimentation, but it does have limitations compared to clusters in the full Databricks environment. One limitation is that this is a single node cluster. If you recall from the prior videos, I mentioned that Spark supports distributed computing and described the architecture of a Spark cluster, which consists of a driver, a cluster manager, and worker nodes. So in this instance, we have three, but we can have as many worker nodes as we like. The driver nodes and worker nodes do the actual processing. And the cluster manager is responsible for resource management. This architecture supports distributed processing, and this is known as a multi-node cluster. In a single node cluster, like the one that we're creating in this Databricks Community Edition, we only have a driver node. The driver node essentially functions as the worker node as well. This does not allow for distributed processing. But for the purposes of learning PySpark, the single node cluster will be sufficient for our needs. So this is a cluster of 15 GB of memory. You also have your configs and environment variables. So let's create the compute. So click on Create Compute. OK, so as you can see by the spinning wheel here, the compute is being created. If you go back to this compute page, under All Purpose Compute, you can see all of the computes that you've created. So I only have one right now. An All Purpose Cluster is for interactive development, while a Job Cluster a job compute cluster is temporary, and it's dedicated to running a single automated job. Databricks Community Edition doesn't support workflows, so we're not really concerned with job compute at this stage. So it typically takes five to 10 minutes for an all-purpose compute cluster to start up. And you can see the state of the cluster here. So this spinning wheel indicates that the cluster is starting up. If you actually click into the cluster, you can see the event log. So you can see, currently, the cluster is being created. OK, so the cluster has now been created, and it took about five minutes to start. So the state of this cluster is running, as you can see by the green dot. You can terminate the cluster by pressing on this Terminate button here. But once you terminate it, restarting the cluster will again take five minutes or so. If you have a cluster running, and it's idle, i.e. it's not doing anything, like this cluster right now, then after a certain period of inactivity, it will automatically terminate. I believe that the auto-termination time is after 60 minutes of inactivity at the time of recording, but I may be wrong. If your cluster does get auto-terminated, you can just restart it again. So let me just stop this cluster. And once your cluster has stopped, as you can see, it's currently in the stopped state, so the terminated state, and you can restart the cluster by pressing this play icon here. But there may be instances where you might encounter issues when you're trying to start a cluster, like I just did there, and it's not letting you. If that's the case, then I'd recommend that you try to first delete this cluster. So to do that, you can click on the three dots here and delete and create a new one. Or you can keep this one and then click on Create Compute. And then you can just create another cluster. However, be warned that you can only have one cluster that's in the running state at a time. So if you have one cluster that's running and you try to create a new one, then it won't let you. So you can have multiple clusters, 
but only one of them can be running at a time. Great, so we've set up our compute cluster.